Hello everyone. It is February 1st, 2023 as I record this and it's GeoRant time. GeoRant number 192, I believe. I'll correct it in the description if I'm wrong. But I'm going to give you a little freebie today because this is something that keeps coming up even though I've done videos about this before. At least one. I think maybe just one. Anyway, we're going to talk about cycles in geology because people don't really understand what that means. Now, I'm not going to say cycles don't happen in geology. They do. But they're not rhythmic, predictable cycles in the sense that you can attach a number to it. It's not like, you know, a sine wave function or it's not like the Earth's orbit around the sun once a year that can be exactly predicted, you know, down to the second. It's not like that. A lot of people like to attach that type of stuff to it. Astronomical cycles are pretty predictable. Even ones in the relatively deep past, well, what an archaeologist would call a deep past, not what a geologist would. But when you start talking about the real deep past, Earth's history, millions and millions of years, you can't really assign a number to it. And I know people will hear someone just say, Oh yeah, supercontinent cycles about every 500 million years. And they'll grab onto that 500 million years. And they'll be like, oh yeah, every 500 million years, there's like supercontinent cycle. Supercontinent is formed, breaks up, reforms, breaks up. No, that's not what happens. It is a cycle in the sense that we will have another supercontinent like we have in the past and have before that. But it doesn't go back even to the beginning of the Earth. Talk for another time. But when we say a supercontinent cycle is about 500 million years, that's plus or minus 200 million years. So that's a margin of error in one direction of 40%. So you're talking a total margin of error almost as long as that 500 million years to begin with. It doesn't mean anything. When you think about cycles in geology, you got to get your mindset off of physics and astronomy and even chemistry to a degree and focus on complex interacting systems. The Earth orbiting the Sun every 365.25 days is very predictable. It's like clockwork, but there's not a lot of external factors involved with that. It's basically the gravitational interaction between the Sun and the Earth. Yes, I know there's the other planets, the Moon is involved, and stuff like that, but it's stuff easily compensated for. When we're talking about geologic cycles, and here's some right here, we are talking interacting systems that are so complex and do, you know, are come from so many other systems interacting with each other that change over time. They are not consistent throughout the history of the earth that you can't assign numbers to these things. We need to get out of that mindset. What you need to do, and these things can, I guess, be tied to geology in a way. Well, hydro, the hydrologic or water cycle can because there's hydrologists and they're considered geologists. But think of it this way. Think of more like these two. We'll use hydrologic cycle. Can we predict when the rain falls, gets absorbed into an aquifer, how long it will take that water to move through that aquifer to a certain point? Yes, we can. We can even do it down to a very accurate amount of time. Can we tell when that water goes into that comes down as rain, enters that aquifer, goes, either goes out to a lake or gets sucked up in a well or, you know, comes out to the ocean or just stays down there. Do we know how can we follow any one molecule of H2O and tell you exactly how long it's going to take from the second it hits that ground to go through that aquifer, come back up to the surface, go into the sky and fall into rain again? No, we can't do that. We have no effing clue. And that's how you need to think of when it comes to geologic cycles. Now, here we have the rock cycle. Most of you are probably familiar with this one. And that's how one rock becomes another one under certain conditions. I'm not going to sit here and go into any detail of that for you. But there is no set amount of time that an igneous rock needs to become a metamorphic or sedimentary rock. If it even ever does. There's nothing saying it even has to. There's nothing saying it has to get melted again. So the cycle is just a cycle in the generic conceptual sense that, yes, a rock can go from a magma to an igneous to a sedimentary or a metamorphic rock 
you know, back to a sedimentary rock or, you know, the metamorphic rock can become sedimentary rock or they both can get melted in the magma again and become igneous rocks. See, that it's cyclical in a conceptual sense, not in a tick-tock tick -tock sense, okay? So we did the rock cycle, a Wilson cycle. Most people aren't even familiar with this one, but the Wilson cycle is a basic concept in plate tectonics. It basically, basically is tied to kind of to this one, which I already talked about, so I'm not going to go over it again. But a Wilson cycle is the concept that if an ocean basin forms from a rift, like the Atlantic Ocean, that eventually that ocean basin will close again. And that is observed throughout geologic history, and it may happen to the Atlantic Ocean. I know there's a lot of models that sit there and say that the Atlantic will get bigger and bigger and bigger and consume the Pacific, but... That's probably not what's going to happen. The Atlantic Ocean will probably eventually close. And that's something else to form a supercontinent. Will it form something that looks exactly like Pangaea did? No, of course not. It's not a simple, oh yeah, it does this and then does this. It's not a heartbeat. Okay, it's not rhythmic like that. You know, it splits. This continent might go here. Another one might come here. They might graze each other in a strike slip and then subduct. And there's your Wilson cycle. And then it rifts again somewhere else on that new continent. So it's not rhythmic and pulsing. It just means the opening of an ocean basin and the closing of one because of plate tectonics. And that will form supercontinents. Now, let's talk about this one, volcanic cycles. What do I mean by that? Well, I, volcanism isn't really cyclical outside of the sense that you can have an eruption, we're not talking about Hawaii type lavas here, continuous eruptions, we're talking more like rift lavas, uh, you know, stuff like that, Iceland. You'll have a period where you'll have lava come up on the surface and then you'll get a little bit of subsidence and you'll get sedimentary rocks come in. And then more lava and sedimentary rocks. That is a volcanic cycle like you see in a mid continent rift, like the mid-continent rift, once, you know, you start getting up and eventually the volcanism stops and you just get sediments. But you will see vol volcanic basalt, lavas, sediments, lavas, sediments, lavas, sediments, and those all th differ in thickness and whatnot. It's not that simple, but we're going to go with that. Why am I mentioning this? Because people think Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption. I've done this one in great detail too. Does Yellowstone have a volcanic cycle? It's a hot spot, yeah. You, long, you get long periods of sediment interrupted with volcanism every once in a while. Can we sit there and say with every certainty that we are overdue for another super eruption? No, we can't. That means nothing. It's not that cyclical. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people nowadays that think that the Yellowstone eruptions aren't just one big pop. There may have been one that was close to that, but what usually happens is a lot of smaller eruptions happen within a period of time, and then it calms down slowly. Now, in a human life scale, it can seem like it takes forever, but we're talking maybe thousands of years here, and the caldera might even be dying. We don't know. It's very old for a hot spot. Well, we used to think it was about 26 million years old, but now there's evidence that it might be closer to 50. And I've done rants about this before with references in them. I'll link them below if I remember. Anyway, hopefully I will. I think that's uh, all I want to talk about today. I think that's it. I'm not going to plug anything or anything like that. But if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I hope you learned something.